Okay, everybody, this is your third <clears throat> lecture video for the week. And this video is basically going to go through the assignments that you have this week and uh, how to do them and what to expect. So here we are in week three. We spent the week not only continuing with how to read notes and treble and bass clef, but extending them through the ledger lines and the specific octave designation. Now, again, before you do these assignments, um, I'm assuming that you have all done the reading and also uh, watched my video lectures on these specific things. If you try to do the assignments without having done any of that stuff, you're going to have a real difficult time. The other thing I want to let you know is this week, sometime this week, you're going to take quiz number one, which is on sound properties music elements. These two uh, uh, bits of, inf of information came from week one. Uh, you know, properties of sound, uh, rhythm, melody, harmony, what are they, and pitch identification, which you know how to read pitches and treble and bass clef. So let's start with um, some of the reading I'm going to have you do. Uh, you'll read from your Musician's Guide to Fundamentals, your ebook, and kind of I just want you to focus on um, one to five, and then 67. 67 specifically focuses on the specific octave designations and ledger lines. So let's take a look at what that reading looks like. And uh, we come up here. Here's our ebook. And here's the chapter you're going to be reading. Pitch notation. And again, you'll need to just read this, it'll help you answer some of the questions in the book. I think we talked about this before. I showed you this on uh, one of the other videos. There's our letters, how the letters move forward, how the letters move backwards. Um, make sure you read this about the piano keyboard because a lot of your assignments will be able to recognize where these letters are on a piano keyboard. And again, you're focused on the fact that you have two black keys, three black keys, two black keys. If you could just remember here, middle C. Of course, you can always refer back to this chart when you are doing the assignments. But again, we got to start recognizing where these letters are on a keyboard. There's our staff notation, treble and bass clef reading. Again, you can see how that used to be the fancy G. This is our specific octave designation. Middle C designated as C4. And... There are many C's, and we number them. The lowest C is C1, come on up an octave, C2, come on up C3, etc., etc. Anyway, like I said, with these, this was all done in my other video, but this is in the reading. And, of course, ledger lines are here, so you can read about ledger lines. And here you've got a good example of how ledger lines work. See, up there. Okay, so that, that's the reading, all right? Now, in terms of the assignments from this chapter, from the ebook, I've given you the music from the Musician's Guide, Know It, Know It, Exercise Chapter 1. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So you go to your book. You should be, by now, you should be able to have this up. And we're going to do the... Um, Let's see, which one was that again? We're going to do the Know It, Chapter 1. So click on this guy. Chapter 1. If you need to, you can read this, How to Use Inquisitive, but I think you guys will be able to get it without reading that. Just go right to here. And uh, I'm going to do this activity as a student. All right, let's start answering questions. All right, so right here, again, you got to get points. Um, you you got to answer a certain number of um, questions, all right? So if you can do like a, I forget what it is, like 14 or something in a row, it, you've demonstrated you can do it. But it'll just keep on going if you're struggling with every activity. So you can't do like, um, you know, 10 all wrong and, and complete the assignment. You have to do them right. So in this one, this assignment says you're going to name the lines. So what is this line's name, this line's name, etc., etc. So let's start with down here. We're in bass clef. 
what is the name of this first line? Well, remember Grace uh, Base Clef goes great big dogs fight animals. So the, this first line is great, the G. So see, we're calling that G. All right, now let's keep on going. Big. Great big. Dogs, I'm dragging it. Fight. And then the last one, animals. Or good boys do fine always. Next question. See what they say, great big doves fly away. You can use whatever you need. Okay, what type of clef is that? Is that treble or bass? Well, I think you know by now. It's the bass or F clef because that's the fancy F. Next question. Now, if you think you know this material pretty well, you can get more points. So here we go. We get gamble. Say so you get more points if you raise that. All right. Now we're going to do the spaces in bass clef. All right. Spaces. All cows eat grass. So the first space is A. Then we got a C. All cows eat grass. And yeah, see, all cows eat grass, all cows eat grass. Next question. So we got more points. See, we're, we're, we're getting points. And look at this. You must answer at least 17 more questions to receive a grade. Now, with all this stuff, you can stop any time and come back and complete it. All right? So you don't have to do it all in one shot. You can, you know, work a little bit, take a break, come back later. So spaces. Now spaces in the treble clef. Let me just do this one. We know the space in treble is face. F. A, C, sometimes I'll see students do this one backward. They'll go F, A, C, E. Remember, up. And finally, okay, so that's how basically these are going. Um, this one, take a look. On a piano keyboard, no black keys appear between the keys B and C, or between, I'm sorry, I just gave you the answer. Uh, you look at a keyboard, you can look at the one in your book, and you can find out the answer to that. So that's how these ones go for this particular chapter. Then I've given you Show It Workbook, Chapter 1, 1.1 and 1.2. So let's do a little bit of that. Let's go back here. And, and these will be set up. You really won't have to hunt for them because I've set them up. So when you log in, you'll see that you'll have to do them. So here we go. We're going to do this one. One point, you'll see this appear, 1.1 1 .1 and 1.2. So here we go. I'm going to try this as a, a student. You have 16 questions. All right. Now, how do we do this? What letter is 3 above C? Now, when you do this, make sure you start counting on the letter C. So you're going to go C, D, E. I just went 3. C, D, E. C, D, E. So three notes above C is E. So let's take the E. There we go. Two above F. Now what's two above F? F, G. I just counted two. A lot of students will get mi uh, mixed up because they'll, they'll, they won't include the, the first letter. So, for instance, the wrong way to do it would be say two above F and to go, okay, F, G, A. Yeah, you went two, but you need to start on, on the letter. F, G. So, two above F is G. F, G. F, G. What's four below E? Now, we're going backwards. Now, again, if you need refreshment on this, you can always go back, and I'll just go ahead and do this. You can always go back to the reading. And the reading gives you the letters. Look at that. If you go up or down, so if we said three below A, one, you got to count the letter A, G, F. Three below A is F. 
What if we said 7 below B? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 below B is C. So that's how you would be working out those uh, particular exercises over there. So let me go back, see if it's, see if it's saved it for me. Okay. All right, so 3 above C, C, D, E. 8 below D. Now, the good thing about 8, that's an octave. It's going to be the same letter. Octave below D is D. 4 below E, go backwards in the alphabet. E, D, C, B. Again, you can always look at that chart. 2 above F. F, G. There's no H in the music alphabet. Okay. Same thing here. 7 above D. Start on D and count 7. Use your fingers. D, E, F, G, A, B, C. 7 above D is C. 3 below B. Go backwards. Start on B. B, A, G. 6 above C. Start on C. Count up 6. C, D, E, F, G, A. And 8 below D, 8 is the octave. If it's a D, it's a D. Now here, you have to know your keyboard. Now you do have that chart. You recognize where things are on the keyboard. Two black keys, the C starts right before two black keys. So anytime you see two black keys and there's a note there, that's C. So here we go. That's C. Whoops. That's C. Now if that's C, where's F? C, D, E, F. See how that works? One, let's do one more. Where's G? C, D, E. E, F, G. Here's G right there. All right. Well, let's do this guy. Where's D? C, D. Which leaves us with B. C, D, E, F, G, A, B. See how easy this is? It's just seven letters. Click on all the E's. Well, we know that C is here, so if this is C... C, D, E. There's E. Oh, here's another one. C, D, E, right there. Here's C, so there's E. All right. So I think you get the, the hang of it once you start doing these. And then I've given you 1.2. Now, with 1.2, you, um, this is, You'll have to know your ledger lines and specific octave designations. So here's our keyboard. Here's C. Specifically, this is middle C. C4. But it's middle C. So if this is just going C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, etc., etc., going backwards. C, B, A, G, F, E, D, C. So the question is, can you recognize this note? And once you recognize what letter this note is, where is it on the keyboard? How high or how low is this note? So this is where you need to know the ledger lines, how the ledger lines work. So let's, let's see how this works. This first ledger line is C. So if this is C, go backwards, C. The space is B, go backwards. The line is A. Go backwards, the space is G, which means this line is F. Okay, now that we know it's F, there's a lot of Fs. C, D, E, F. This is F. Looks like F starts before the three black keys. So that's F. And this is F. And this is F. So this one's F. This one's F. This one's F. The question is, where on a keyboard is this F? Well, middle C is right here. This is middle C. So it looks like this F 
is just below, below middle C. So here's middle C. Go to the F that's below. So CS is number one. That number one F is here. All right. Now let's look at this one. If this is C, that ledger line is C, what's right below C? Right before C is B. This guy is right before C. There's the middle C. So that means the B's right there. So this B, that B, there's a lot of B's, but this one is right there on the keyboard. This is an F, and this is the F that's just above middle C. So that's where that F is. So you see, this F is that low. This F is right there. This is D. Every good bird does. So that's obviously this one. Where's the, It's not there because that D is right next to middle C. That's not next to middle C. That, that's higher. So it's going to have to be this one, which leaves us with the last one. That B is way, way up there. All right, continuing on. They change where middle C is. Middle C is now, now we're looking at the lower end of the keyboard. So this first note here, you got to be able to read ledger lines. Well, what is that note? All right, well, we know this line is G. Great. Now count backwards. Line, space, line, space, line. This line is G, the space is F, the line is E, the space is D, the line is C. So this is C. This, this is C. All right. Number one is C. Which C? That's a C. That's a C. That's a C. So which C is this? Well, middle C would be here. Right? The first ledger line of base clef is middle C. That'd be there. Then if we go to this C, that's all cows, that C would be here. So this C is the really low. So that C is all the way down here. Where is this B? Great big. That's a B. Well, here's middle C. That's a B, but that's right next to middle C. Middle C is up here, so that, that's farther. So it's not this B, it's this B. See how it works? All cows eat grass, that's a G. Number three is G, so where is this G? Here's middle C. It looks like that's right below middle C. C, B, A, G. Now here's middle C which means number four is an E, C, D, E, and it looks like that E is just above middle C. There's middle C, and there's that E, which leaves us with the last guy, A, and there's the ledger lines, C, D, E, F, G, A. There we go. Now we have the octave numbers. Now this is in my lecture video. It's in the charts and it's in the reading. So, let's start. Let's start with this guy. What is it? If you can read your ledger lines, we know that this is F, this space is G, this line is A, this space is B, that line is C. Okay, it's a C. Problem is, is it C4, C6, or C5? C4 is middle C. Middle C is here. The next C is here. F A C. So middle C is C4. This C is C5, which means this guy must be C6. If you'd like, you can just go to the ebook and look at the chart. It has all of them marked. What note is this? C. This is middle C. Go backwards. C. Space is B, that line is A. Which A? There's lots of A's. Well, if this is C4, this is below C4. 
Now, a lot of students say, oh, it must be A4. Nope, because A4 is here. The system starts on C. C4, D4, E4, F4, G4, A4. So if this is A4, that must be the lower A, A3. What's this? Every good bird does. That's a D. Which D? D4, D5. Well, middle C is C4, which means this is D4. This D is above D4, which makes it D5. There's middle C. Middle C, C4. And finally, what's this? This line is F. Every good bird does fly. That's F which means the space is G, and after G comes the line A. That's an A. Is it A4, A6, or A5? A4, here's C4, C4, D4, E4, F4, G4, A4. This is A4, which means this is the A above A4. The A above A4 is A5. See? And you continue on that way with these assignments. So those are the assignments for the ebook. And again, it's everything we have in the video lecture and everything that we have in the ebook reading. Then I've given you some tone savvy assignments. I've given you on tone savvy, uh, continue to identify treble and bass clef notes, but this time I've put ledger lines in there. And then I've given you some pace note and some rhythm. So let's, we'll talk about this in a second. Let's do this. You did this last week without ledger lines. This time, I've done ledger lines. So this is what your assignments will look like. Let's start treble. You can always practice these, folks. You don't have to just submit. You can spend some time practicing. We're going to keep the ledger lines in there. And here we go. What is it? Now, last week, you would have learned every good bird does fly. But now we have ledger lines. So what is it? You count if this is F, the line is G, and the space is G, the line is A, the space is B, that line is C. So that is a C. What's this? This is E. This note is right before E. Remember, every good bird does fly, every E. This is before E. The note before E is D. Let's get, let's get a hint. Okay, there's G. This note is between G and B. What's between G and B? A. Every good. Oh, wow, okay. Let's figure out what that is. Got a whole bunch of ledger lines. F, if you don't know this is F, you're gonna have a hard time figuring this out. Every good bird does fly F. Now let's go. F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. So that's a C. So you, we can see specifically, if you were gonna give it a, an octave designation, here's C4, here's C5, Here's C6, that would be C7. But right now it's not asking us, it just wants us to know the letter. That is a C. One more. Last letter of the word face. And let's just do a couple of uh, uh, bass clef ones. Reminding you, you can practice these things before submitting. We want ledger lines. Bass clef. This is middle C. C, D, E. Hmm. C, D, E, F, G, A. Now, bef before I click this, I just want to say, all this stuff becomes easier to read the more you, you, you play them uh, as, as a musician. The more you see these, you just start recognizing them, so you no longer have to count all the time. You just realize three ledger lines, the note that sits on top of three ledger lines is A. You just become familiar with it. There's middle C. 
What's this? This is G. Go backwards, G, F, E. So that's how these exercises will work. You are just demonstrating continued knowledge of reading notes, but you're extending the staff. Then I've given you what's called pace notes, and this is what pace note is. Pretty much anybody um, can stare at something for an hour and finally figure out <laughs> what they're looking at. I've given you this this week. Pace notes uh, with no ledger lines. And these ones, the notes are moving. So you don't have a lot of time to think about it. You have to get to the point where you can instantly recognize what you see. So let's see how these exercises work. Quick, what is it? What is it? Figure it out. E. What's that one? Think about it. A. What's that one? F. Uh, what's that one? That's a B. What's this one? Now, I d didn't set it to move this fast. But the idea is when people read music, they instantly know what they're looking at. They don't sit there and scratch their head. Now, let's say this is going too fast and you're like starting to freak out. Stop. Take a Valium. Take a drink. Say, okay, whew. All right, all right, here we go. Try it again. All right, here we go. Now, again, I'm going to set the speed for a little bit slower. But that's all you're doing. And the more you do this, the more you practice this, the more adept you are beginning to become at reading music. Like I said, anybody can just sit at a note, stare at it, and after 10 minutes, figure it out. But that's not reading music. That's like somebody putting some a Dr. Seuss book in front of you and saying, uh, re read this, and it takes you forever to read the first three sentences. We want to, we want to practice. Musicianship is about practicing. Musicianship is about increasing those skills that go beyond just, I know that a note is F. How fast can you do it? Remove ledger lines. We're going to do some bass clef. Quick, what is it? All cows eat. That's the last one. That's A. That's great big. Great big dogs fight. All cows. And eventually you just know. That's an A. You just know it. It's a G. That's a G. You got to wait till they get to the end. Okay. And again, you can always stop anytime. I'm going to set that for a little bit slower speed. And you can practice. When you practice these things, you can set the speed yourself if you want to practice. Say, I'm going to practice... Uh, with no ledger lines, but the speed is too fast. So, all right, well, practice slow. Practice at a speed three. Okay, that gives you time. A little bit more time. Okay, what is that? What is that? Oh, yeah, great. What's this? All cows, okay? And I just got to keep on emphasizing this. The only way you get good at something is to practice, whether it's being a musician or a mechanic or a basketball player or a skateboarder. You got to practice. You are not going to develop skills unless you practice. Okay, and then the other one I've given you, the last exercise for tone savvy. And again, the tone savvy ones are designed to work on your um, musicianship. All right, not just knowledge, but musicianship. Uh, I think, um, let me make sure it's set. Quarters, halves, holes, and eighths. Okay, so you guys know about no rhythm. If you practice this, take out the ties. We don't want any ties. All right, so we're going to calibrate. All right, now. Can you look at rhythms and know what they're doing? We count to four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Remember, you gotta go with the click track. You can't go slower or faster than the click. You'll hear the intro. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And of course, I'm tapping my mouse pad. Oh, okay, what's this one doing? Remember how we break these up? 
one and two, three, four. One and two, three, four. Let's hear it. I think I can tap that. One, two, three, four. One and two, three, four. One and two, three, four. See? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and four. And of course, hopefully you guys understand how I'm tapping my pad. Let's listen to this guy. One, two, three, four. You see that? One and two and three and four and. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One and two and three and four and. Let's do one more. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and four, and. Listen. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and four, and. I got that. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and four, and. All right, so that, again, practice, guys. Practice, practice, practice. I can't emphasize that more. So for this week, that's what you're looking at. You have your video lectures. You've got your exercises. And by the end of this week, you should be able to continue to recognize these expanded and modern ledger lines, our specific octave designations, and continue to work on our musicianship skills of reading rhythms. All right, guys, have a great week.